Welcome to Configuring ISOTAP. Now this is going to be part one of a two-part video. And in part one, I want to talk to you about ISOTAP, what it is, what it does, when we would use it, because it is an IP version 6 transition technology. Now Microsoft mentions configuring ISOTAP explicitly in their objectives for this certification exam, so I want to cover that here. So in part one, let's chalk talk just a little bit about what it is, why you would use it. That'll probably get you through most questions on the exam. Then in part two, I'll talk with you step by step through how we set up an ISOTAP server so that you can see how that's done and you can understand that and get through the exam on that end. So first of all, what exactly is ISOTAP? Well, the name really tells you a lot about it. Intrasite automatic tunnel addressing protocol. Now this is, I've already mentioned, an IP version 6 transition technology. This is designed to help us move IP version 6 traffic across an IP version 4 network that doesn't really support IP version 6. Now what it's going to do is it's going to use tunneling. The IP version 6 packets are going to be encapsulated within an IP version 4 header. And so the router thinks that it's looking at IP version 4 and goes across the IP4 network. Then when it gets to the other end, it's broken out and there's your IP version 6. Now ISOTAP is used. Make sure you get this one. ISOTAP is used within a site or within an intranet. ISOTAP is not used for communications on the public internet. Now if you can get that one aspect of it down, you can probably pick your way through most questions or concerns, both on the exam and the real world, about ISOTAP. This is only designed for private you know, sites, intranets, those sort of things. You don't use ISOTAP on the public internet. Now, if this whole concept of ISOTAP is new to you, go out and do a little outside reading on IP version 6 and read about ISOTAP. Now, let me tell you one thing before I go on. ISOTAP can be confusing out there because of some of the changes with direct access and some things in Windows Server 2012. There's a debate about do I even need ISOTAP when I'm running 2012. Some people say yes, some people say no. So don't get caught up in all that. Just know what ISOTAP is, know what it does, know when you would use it. That's as far as you need to go. Once you get into a real world implementation, you'll figure out really quickly whether you need to use ISOTAP. Now, why would we use this? Well, as IP version 6 usage expands, and it will, even if it's not in your network right now and you're not using it, it's eventually going to happen. And once you start converting to IP version 6, you're going to have parts of your network that will convert completely first. And so you're going to have some IP version 6 only subnets on your network, and then you're going to have some IP version 4 subnets. Well, ISOTAP will allow hosts on those IP version 4 only networks to communicate with hosts on the IP version 6 only network. So how do we configure this and make it happen? Well, here's the good news. On the client side, you don't have to do anything. It's already a function that's working by default. On the server side, you're going to have to do some configuration. You're going to have to tell your Windows server to function as an ISOTAP router and then advertise itself on the network so that the traffic can figure out where to go, what to do, the clients know where to send their IP version 6 traffic, and those sorts of things. Now, when you configure ISOTAP, also watch for this, especially on the exam, it is command line only. There's no graphical user interface. Now, there is a little twist to that, and that is when we set up some of Microsoft's remote access functionalities, in certain situations, it will set up an ISOTAP router for you. And technically, I guess that's a GUI because it's coming through the server manager. But for the purposes of the exam, it's command line only. Now, there are five steps involved with configuring your Windows Server 2012 box to be an ISOTAP router. The first thing, we have to configure the server to advertise itself as an ISOTAP router. Then we need to provide the ISOTAP prefix to hosts. Then we're going to configure the ISOTAP router to forward packets with that prefix to the IP version 6 network that they're trying to reach. 
then we will actually enable routing on the ISOTAP adapter. Keep in mind, we're going to have a NIC card in our computer. Uh, it will automatically have an ISOTAP tunneling protocol section on it. Uh, you may even see some IP version 6 addresses that are generated. So that'll be out there. We just need to enable routing on that adapter for ISOTAP. And then last but not least, we'll actually provide the IP version 6 routes that will be advertised to hosts. So when they're looking for things, they'll contact our router because it's been advertising, and then they'll see the host that they need, and everybody gets matched up just like before. So this is not the simplest thing, and especially if it's a whole new concept to you, you'll just have to do it a couple of times. So come back and join me in part two, and I'll show you the commands that you will use in these five steps to configure Windows Server 2012 as an ISOTAP router, and that's about as deep as they're going to go on the exam with you. So come join me in part two, and let's look at these five steps a little bit closer.